Hello everyone and welcome back to the Real Positive Girl podcast. Happy Monday. Um, Thanks so much for coming back and joining me for another week full of podcast episodes geared towards mental wellness, mental health, and just overall topics to really help you live your best absolute life. Like that is definitely my goal. And it actually has been my goal for most of my entire life, including a great portion of my childhood. I would say from age 10 or 11, I had decided to go into the mental health field. And, you know, I am in there in a in a different way than I expected to be, uh, but I am very grateful that I'm able to put out this podcast and continue to build up content online to help people the best way that I can right now. So, um, my name is Sabrina. I <laughs> should have said that a little bit earlier, but here I am. My name is Sabrina, and happy Monday to you all. I hope that you had a fantastic weekend, and I hope that everything was awesome. Hopefully, you got some downtime, and then you got some time to do work on whatever projects or home organization things, you know, all those things around our house that we um, didn't have time for or had been putting off. And now suddenly um, a lot of us have that extra time to work on those things. And for me, you know, some of those things are getting done. Like I will reorganize a drawer here and there. I have gone through my closet a couple times to really evaluate, am I really going to wear this sweater that I've had in here for six years and (laughs) I have worn like twice, like those kind of things um, to keep myself busy. But honestly, the thing that has been keeping me the most busy is to focus on creating more content and figuring out my own path to um, being able to better serve you guys um, in regards to mental wellness. So anyway, I hope that your day was great. And I hope that today, Monday, your day is going absolutely fantastic. If your day is just starting, I hope that it is really good. I hope that you are able to start off on the right foot, positive with the right mindset, able to, you know, accomplish everything that you are setting out to do, whether that's work or with your kids or, you know, with school, whatever it is that you are involved in. Um, If you're in the middle of your day or towards the end and it was kind of rough, it was kind of sucky, I just hope that you were able to find that five minutes of time that I always talk about five minutes where you're able to be by yourself, experience some peace, some comfort in just knowing that you can take the time and take that moment to just restart and just start the day again from that moment and even take some time to really problem solve and figure out what you need to do to make the day better or to make it better tomorrow and at least end the day feeling neutral, feeling okay about it and not just throwing away the whole day because just a couple of bad things happened. You know, I feel like that if that is something that you struggle with, it is something that you need to work hard on um, changing and moving on from that habit because if you continue to just throw away the whole day after bad things happen, then you will have this negative, um, just, you'll just have this negative outlook on life constantly because, you know, I feel like the more times you do that, the more times that you will um, consider little nitpicky things as really bad things and reasons to throw away the day. And I feel like it's just giving yourself an excuse to be negative. And so I encourage you. I know I always start out super strong, usually at the beginning of the week, really describing this because, you know, for people that are new here or just to re-cement that thinking that I have. Just don't throw the whole day away just because of ne- a couple of bad things have happened. Realize that you should still be grateful to be alive, to be healthy, to have a job, to ha- be able to go to school, be able to be with your family, whatever it is that you can find to be grateful for. Um, and just know that the next day or the next few hours or whatever can be better. And even if you can just end your day feeling neutral, feeling okay about it, and um, look forward to the next day tomorrow. So anyway, I hope that your day gets better if it's not going well. So this week, we are going to talk about personal boundaries. And I literally waited so late in the week to um, make the decision on what to talk about this week for the podcast because I wasn't sure, you know, on the regular um, throughout the week, usually every single day I'll come up with different topics and ideas of what to talk about on the podcast, Um, but to be honest with you, I have to have like a burning passion when I look at that topic and really want to discuss it or else I feel like I won't 
you know, feel so intense about it, so deep about it. And even though every topic I spend um, lots of time researching and writing notes and figuring out what I want to talk about so I don't ramble too much, because as you know, if you're not new here, I do tend to ramble a little bit and I try to catch myself which is why I have notes. And if you are curious about those notes, you can check them out in the description box. Um, every single, for every single episode, there's generally the general outline of what I'm going to talk about. And it's very clear and concise. I feel if it's not, you know, send me an email that's down there in the description box too, and tell me otherwise so I can clean it up for you. But, um, I just, I have to, the bottom line is I have to feel passionate about it. And, um, I have to feel like it's going to be worthy of your time to actually listen to these episodes and actually gain something from it and feel like you can walk away listening to 15 to 19 minutes of me talking about whatever and actually feel like you learned something and it's going to be beneficial to you. So anyway, when I look through my list of ideas, I was like, you know, I always talk about boundaries um, all the time and I will continue to talk about boundaries even outside of this these this week's episodes but I thought it was time to really dive deep into it so this week again we are talking about personal boundaries and today Monday we are going to be talking about what are personal boundaries and I just like to start the week off really um, describing what the topic is about uh, especially if people are not more not generally familiar with what a boundary is um, especially personal boundaries so Let's go ahead and finally <laughs> dive right in. Um, personal boundaries are the limits we set for ourselves within relationships, and those relationships could be intimate relationships or friendships, um, even uh, work relationships, you know, or acquaintances. Um, it just depends. There's different levels of relationships, but it is the limits and the rules that we set for all of those. Um, someone with healthy boundaries can easily say no to things and feel good about it, you know, and that, and I, I wanted to throw that in there and I'll talk about that more um, throughout this episode and throughout the week, but it's like one of the key things about boundaries is being able to say no and feeling fine about it and not having this guilt creep up and want to strangle you. Um, you just feel good about it. You feel like you can just move on. You're not going to dwell on it. It's not going to be this constant thing hanging over your head that you said no and maybe you should change your mind. No, you feel good about it and you're about to move on with life and, and that is awesome. Uh, the ability to make decisions based on what is best for you and not based on how it will affect the other person is key. And let me just tell you, personal boundaries are definitely things that I struggle with. Um, I've been working on it. I've been very cognizant about having personal boundaries and making sure those people close in my life know those personal boundaries and um, becoming more confident in proclaiming those boundaries in an appropriate way and <laughs> being able to maintain them and reinforce them so that uh, I can maintain um, a good stability for my mental health and wellness. So that is, and that is like the main point of really wanting to dive deep on personal boundaries because I want everyone to understand how important it is for your um, mental health stability and how easily you can not have them and have them and then have them in kind of the wrong ways. Um, there are three types of personal boundaries that I want to mention just to understand how there are multiple levels and how each one depends on the setting and the situation that you're in. Because, you know, if you want to talk about your intimate uh, personal boundaries, that's definitely going to be different from the boundaries that you have at work, you know, or even the boundaries that you have with your friends. Like, for example, if you were to say something to your friends that's really funny and, you know, maybe um, a little off color and something that might not be appropriate for you to say at work, say to like your colleagues at work or your boss even. So you realize how the boundaries there are going to be a little bit different. And so it's important to understand um, what your boundaries are within those different uh, relationships. And, you know, something that you might say to your intimate partner would be totally different than you might even say to your friends. Of course, the people at work or even the like acquaintances, like if you're um, at church with friends, um, and right now during this climate, not physically at church, but you know, you know what I mean, like church friends or even like acquaintances in your community. So it's definitely going to be different, different depending on the setting and the situation. Um, even if you are among friends, but maybe you're among um, a mix of people that you are close to and have a good relationship with and, and a mix of acquaintances and people that you don't really know, you may not um, talk about or say certain things because it's just not the right setting for that. So let's just go ahead and dive in about 
the types of boundaries there are. So there are healthy boundaries, which is the most sought after, obviously. Um, there are hard boundaries that are super rigid and, and really controlled roles. And then there are soft boundaries, which is basically not really boundaries at all. But, you know, they're, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like just basically not having boundaries at all. And we'll go ahead and break those down. Um, so let's start with soft boundaries. These are the type of boundaries, again, not really boundaries, where it is really hard to say no to others' requests, um, overly involved in other people's problems, um, dependent upon other people's opinions, accepts abuse and disrespect, and a serious fear of rejection. And I will, you know, transparently tell you that this is definitely the, the, quote unquote boundaries that I was sitting in for like the longest time because I didn't have any. I didn't really have any. I just let everything fly. My whole life existence was dependent upon pleasing other people. I am definitely one of those those hardcore people pleasers, perfectionists because I just and it's kind of just how I was raised as well and it had it's something that is so difficult to break if you are a people pleaser or perfectionist or both of those things you know how hard it is to break away from that mindset and that lifestyle. So yeah, so having soft boundaries, not being able, it's say, having it be really hard to say no to other people's requests when you know that it's something that you just don't have the capacity for, you don't have the time, you don't have the energy to do, but you don't wanna disappoint them. That's definitely a soft boundary. Um, overly involved in other people's problems. And honestly, I feel like this, the biggest reason for this is because you want to neglect your own problems, your own situations going on in your life. So being overly involved in other people's problems is just something for you to be distracted with. Also, not realizing or not taking the time to realize that it's just not your responsibility to be involved in those problems because those things don't belong to you and you're not um, closely uh, involved or related or have a close relationship with the person that would actually invite you into those problems. So that's definitely an important thing. Um, depending upon other people's opinions, you know, that's, um, that's definitely a struggle that I know a lot of people have. And that's definitely a struggle that I currently have. And, you know, it's, it's gone away. I feel like I'm definitely, um, on the better side of that where I don't and not wholly dependent on their opinions, but sometimes I still struggle with that. And I know a lot of people do. It's really, really hard. Um, and accepts abuse and disrespect, which, you know, if you are allowing people to talk negative to you, like warp your mindset, manipulate you and just treat you like trash, like that's definitely unacceptable. And that's definitely a sign that you are not um, practicing healthy boundaries and a serious fear of rejection, which is something that I still battle with um, a lot, a lot, a lot. And it surprises me when I'm able to step outside of myself and not have a fear of rejection and just go for things and just, you know, like pee into the wind or just like, it's like, a, just like, th uh, like throw the dice and just be like, okay, hey, whatever happens, happens. Um, I get these like sparks of confidence and I don't know if anyone else can relate to that, but uh, fear of rejection is definitely the thing that is like one of my biggest struggles right now. Um, and so I am definitely trying to realize that I need to have more boundaries and realize because if we do get rejected, then it's not the end of the world. You know, it might be the end of those dreams or those projects or those goals, um, but it's not the end of the world. And then you can always pick yourself back up after that. So that is soft boundaries. Next up, hard boundaries. So traits of this type of boundary are avoiding intimacy and personal relationships. Um, you won't ask for help, protective of personal information, no real close friendships or relationships, like intimate relationships and such, um, keeps people at a distance to avoid rejection and can be detached even in romantic relationships. So you might be saying, well, like those things sound kind of bad, but not really bad because at least you have boundaries. Yes. Okay. So at least you have boundaries, but they're super hard and rigid and they're not going to allow you to actually grow within yourself and within the relationships that you have with others, like avoiding intimacy and personal relationships. Like how are you supposed to have relationships if you avoid being intimate, being personal, you know, really like finding those people that you trust, that you're able to talk to, that you're able to break things down with, like it can become really lonely and isolating yourself on purpose is 
it's a tough road to be in. Like, you know, you might feel comfortable being there. You're like, no, I don't need any bun, but there's going to be a point where it's going to, you're going to go be going through something and you're going to want to have someone there. But if you're so closed off because you have that fear of being rejected or not, or misunderstood, um, and you don't deal with that or find the right people to have in your life so you, that you don't feel that way, then you're going to suffer more than you should. Um, not asking for help, I feel like derives directly from pride in other things, um, which is terrible because I, but I also feel like it harkens back to like not wanting to let people in, feeling misunderstood, feeling like people just won't get it or won't do it the way that you want because you have control issues, you know, those type of things. Um, protective of personal information, the same thing. No real close friendships or relationships because how can you have that if you avoid intimacy and having relationships? Keeping people at a distance to avoid rejection because rejection is one of the most terrible things that people just over-exaggerate the negative effects of it. I understand that it can hurt. Believe me, I've been there many times. It can hurt, but it's definitely a hurt. You'll be able to get over it easier than, you know, having to figure out how to uh, create relationships or being alone in your life because you decided to shut everyone out. Um, and then being detached, even in romantic relationships, because again, you just want to hide. You just want to isolate yourself. You don't want to open yourself up and um, let yourself be vulnerable for trust and possible heartbreak and being disappointed. But those are all things that we can grow and learn from and then figure out it, um, how to choose the right people to be in our life rather than just cut everyone out and just avoid the whole thing because that's not the way you should do it. You should definitely take the time to learn those skills and develop from them so that you can have a more enjoyable life. Um, lastly, the type of boundaries everyone should seek to have healthy boundaries. So this will include being able to say no to others and accept when others say no to you. That's very important because, you know, at, uh, as I said in the beginning, you know, can easily say no to things that you've been invited to or even things that you really want to do. You're like, someone's like, oh, you know, come on this trip with us or go to this party with us or go shopping with us. But you know that you need to say no because you don't have the money you don't have the time, maybe you don't have the energy, you know, maybe there's a couple social anxiety things that you need to continue to work on that by going and participating in those things that will not help you get better at those things. So it's important to know when to say no, but also when other people say no to you, you know, when you ask them for something or to go somewhere or to do something or be a part of something and they say no to you, you're not going to fall apart. You're not going to feel like the world is ending. You're not going to feel like massive rejection. You're just going to accept their no with or without an explanation and be fine with that and realize that they have their own boundaries too, which is great. Um, confident in their own opinions, which is so good. Um, not compromising your values for others because no one should ever, ever, ever do that. And I know everyone's values are different and even for um, romantic partners, you shouldn't be doing that. No, uh, no over and under sharing of personal information. You know, you find that healthy balance of sharing the things that you should be sharing and keeping the things private that you should keep private unless it's going to be like with your intimate partners, which is different. Um, but you know what I mean? And the ability to communicate personal wants and needs to others. So uh, communication. Mm. I'm going to have to deeply talk about that one week because communication is like the key to everything. Um, but I feel like I say a lot of things are the keys to everything. And I feel like maybe we should just do like a list of keys one week too. Yeah, let's think about that. Um, but So the ability to communicate personal wants and needs to others, you know, being able to tell people I need this or I would prefer this or um, I want to do this or I want this to be incorporated into my life. You know, I want to have this type of relationship. I want to have these type of needs met. Like it's just being able to actually say those things to the people in your life that you trust is so beneficial and it's definitely something that I still struggle with that my husband is helping me get over uh, because I have a problem saying what I want and what I need because I don't want to overburden people or I feel like maybe they won't care or maybe it won't be anything that I need them to be concerned about when that's not really true especially if it's like with an intimate partner or someone that you truly care about so that's definitely so super important in having healthy boundaries. Um, knowing your personal limits will help you live a more balanced life emotionally. Absolutely. Everyone should know what their personal limits are, um, whether it's things they want to do or can't do or actually have the bandwidth to do. 
It also prevents you from going beyond your zone of comfort and standing up for yourself. If others do violate those boundaries, you need to be able to have it within yourself to be like, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk about this or I don't, I just don't feel comfortable talking about it. I don't feel comfortable participating in that. Please don't touch me or feel like you have the permission to treat me that way. Don't say those things to me. Um, and you know, oh no, you don't have the right to tell me what to do or the expectations that you're placing on me are inappropriate and um, not fair and absolutely are not going to fly with me. You need to have the ability and the confidence to say those kind of things when people are trying to step all over you and take advantage of you. The main thing about having boundaries is the ability to live your life the way you want to without feeling guilty about it. The key to this is maintaining your boundaries. So, you know, those go hand in hand. Do you want to be able to live your life without feeling guilty about it, without feeling guilty of saying no, without feeling guilty of telling people what your boundaries are, especially when they overstep them, being confident in your opinions, being confident in everything that you choose to do and say, then you have to maintain the boundaries. You have to continue to implement them in your life despite how uncomfortable or hard it may be at certain times with certain people in your life you have to just continue to go after that and um, be diligent in maintaining your boundaries or else everything will fall apart and you might end up back into the soft boundaries category or you might feel so hurt and um <laughs> and just taken advantage of that you'll roll up into the hard boundaries and both of those places are another place they're not places that you want to be as we've already discussed um i hope you're excited to explore more about personal boundaries this week and break down more specific examples and solutions for creating and maintaining your boundaries. That is the end of today's episode. Thanks again for joining me on the Real Positive Girl podcast. Again, my name is Sabrina. Happy Monday, everyone. I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If so, please, 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 I encourage you to share it with other people. Also, again, check the description box for all the notes for the show and where you can find me on Instagram or if you want to send me an email with any comments, questions, concerns, or prayer requests. So again, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Happy Monday. And I hope to see you back here tomorrow for Tuesday's episode. Thanks again. Bye.